Hi friends, uh, welcome to another beautiful pour. So this pour is inspired by friendship and the how delicate it is. Um, and I'm calling it um, Ghost Orchid because it's one of the most delicate orchids in the world. It's super rare as well. And, um, and it's done in a black and white because the, I thought that would be super stunning. Now, when I started off, um, I wasn't sure exactly how to, how the pour was gonna turn out. I thought perhaps I might have to do like a ring pour in the middle at the very end to see if I would be able to capture this because, um, yeah, so, um, I was thinking, um, about two staff members that we had at the Girl Scouts. And um, Daniela and Menan. Menan when was um, the community organizer for the Vietnamese community and uh, who worked for the Girl Scouts and, and help us, helped us um, sort of like come up with um, culturally relevant ways to serve the Vietnamese community in San Jose in the Silicon Valley area. And anyhow, but she had the greenest thumb in terms of orchids. Um, and uh, yeah, um, so when I was at the Girl Scouts, I ended up being ill and was out for several months. And... Um, the Vietnamese community, like the Girl Scout leaders, um, all got together and gifted me this beautiful, beautiful orchid. And so here I have it in my office, super proud of it. Um, but I clearly, and even though I, most of the time I have a green thumb, um, with this orchid, you know, I just was not having the best of time. I mean, I gave it all my, you know, effort into keeping it alive. And I do check-ins with my nan. Um, I, th I forget. I think it's over two weeks or once a month. I think it was over two weeks where we did check-ins. Basically just checking in, see how, you know, how she was doing, how the community was doing. There are different resources that she needed, and if I needed to sort of try to get that for her, and um, yeah, but so she she come into my office, she wouldn't say anything. Finally, one day, she walks in, and it was end of day, and she goes, "Okay, Lupe, I'm just gonna take this from you." <laughs> she said, "I'm gonna take care of it, bring it back to life, and then I'll bring it back to you." <laughs> yeah, so it was super like. It was dry. I mean, but like I said, I gave it water. I gave it plant, I mean, orchid food. But I just, you know, I was killing the thing. And um, yeah, so my nan was fantastic. She took it for a couple weeks, maybe a couple months. I don't remember. I think it was a couple weeks. And then um, then she brought it back and it was like, um, it was like new. Uh, but I knew it was the same one because it had the same... Um, you know, container stuff that I had put into my into the orchid, and so I know that it was she didn't just like replace it and give me a different one. She just had that kind of, um, you know, fortitude to be able to take care of orchids, and uh, yeah, and so these orchids are so rare, so delicate, and yeah, she was just fantastic. Anyhow, yeah, so I was thinking about her, missing her, um, and, uh, yeah, so I wanted to do something that uh, would remind me of her, so I started off with a little bit in the middle, and then I just started, um, sort of gave it the sort of limbs that the ghost orchid has, and I think it came out pretty close, um, let me see if I can show you another like comparison of what the intention was, but yeah. So my heart goes out to Manan. I know that um after I retired from the Girl Scouts, she stayed on for a bit and then went off to work 
with the Children's Museum in San Jose. Um, yeah, so I hope she's doing well. I haven't really kept in touch with her, which sucks. But I have really haven't kept in touch with a lot of people. But, yeah, anyhow, yeah. Um, let's get back to this piece, which... Um, I um at the end I I was putting these white dots. I I had done another pour where I put um uh artificial cells. And so that's kind of what I was going for right now, but then I thought about it and decided to do little hearts because I was feeling the love at the time. And decided to go ahead and do that. And then try to incorporate sort of the lines of the orchid into the rest of the pores to give it sort of a more organic feel to them. And um, yeah, so I'm super happy. It's like the first all black and white piece that I've done. Um, like I said before, I've done artificial cells before. But um, it was it was not in a black and white. So... I'm super surprised um, that I liked w what turned out. But it's probably because, once again, it was the ghost orchid that I was thinking of. And I was also thinking about Manan, who, was a, who is a fantastic person. And um, super patient with me in terms of the orchids. Um, yeah. And... Uh, yeah, but all the staff at the Girl Scouts was fantastic. Uh, especially um, think fondly of um, Minan when Daniela Gomez and Lisa Zimba. Uh, so Lisa is Canadian, Daniela is Mexican American, and uh, Minan is uh, obviously Vietnamese American. Um, of course, I had other fantastic staff and just fantastic. Um, but I think th those three were like the friendliest women you could ever meet. And so I feel super lucky to have um, had an, an opportunity to, to, to know them and to call them friends. Um, so... With Daniela, I'm still in touch with her, and I'm also sort of in touch with Lisa. I was more in touch with her when she after she left the Girl Scouts. After I left, she left. Um, she left, and she worked at the at Stanford at the graduate school, or the law school. No, it was graduate school. Um. And then, um, then she moved to Florida, and then she moved to uh Minnesota, and so I sort of lost lost track of her in Minnesota. But, um, Daniela um is in Mexico, and um, yeah, so she also retired at the same time I did. So, w with the mergers of the different Girl Scout councils, we got to um people who had been there for a certain amount of time, um, got to retire. So. You know, I was super lucky to be able to retire from any work at 35, right? Super lucky. But then I went back to school. I also became the director of Boys and Girls Club. So I wasn't just like, oh, I'm done. No, I kept working until I could. And then I had my accident. But nonetheless, here it is. It's a fantastic piece. Um, yeah, like I said, I'm, I'm really surprised... Well, like, I really surprised myself in terms of, like, how much I enjoy pouring with just black and white. One, because I rarely use black. And then, um, two, uh, because I only use two colors. And this gives me different gradients of, like, the black. So I see different grays. Like, yeah. Even, I think, um, because my, um... Lazy Deborah had uh, had paint from my previous pour. Somehow it kind of merged a little bit in there. I tried to f fix it, but anyhow. So, yeah, so that's, you saw the ghost um, 
orchid and then you saw what I did and I I think I think I achieved it. I think it looks pretty good. Now I'm showing you different details of the piece that I think is interesting and I think a lot of it and of course it's just me saying this but I think a lot of it looks kind of 3D-ish, you know? Um so so maybe that's what happens with like when you use just to color. So I will investigate this. I will um do some more experiments and um <clears throat> see if I can do like just to colors like but like white and something else or black and something else and see if if um I get the same sort of feel or look, which is more of a 3D. So anyhow, so this one is is called Ghost Orchid and is in memory, not memory, because that signifies something else. It's in inspired by um an honoring of uh Minan Wen and the Vietnamese community in Silicon Valley, who was fantastic to me, super supportive, and I really enjoyed working with them. So, all right. Well, thanks for watching. Um, please like and subscribe. Uh, I am trying to grow my channel, and I think today I digressed a bit, but uh, nonetheless, it's a good pour. I'll see you on the next one. Thank you so much.